Hello, and today we're going to talk about panel schedules and how to quickly, easily create your panel schedules within your model. So a few things to note here. One, it's going to read everything from the basically information that's feeding up to it. So with this, and just note, whenever your panel schedules get created, it's going to be the name of the panel device anything like that that is initially populated. So right now we're looking at like MSB1. For this model, if we look at MSB, we can see that it's, you know, across different uh, pieces and it's gonna default to a 20 amp rating. So you need to make sure that these are uh, changed. And right now it's <clears throat> showing VA in the uh, phase column. And you can also change this in the template settings. So if you did a uh, different panel type, you know, it's gonna change that. So anything that's in there, you can change. You can change if it's feed through or whatever, um, or we can change it back, right? So we can, but again, note that any text that you have in here, it's gonna get removed. I don't have any. Um, so again, the layout can change from all that. So again, it'll, do load classifications, anything that you want here, all through that template. And some things to note, so like if we go to E1, we'll have to find E1 in the model, um, since I don't have a panel created for E1. So E1, so we'll create a panel schedule. So it's really just a symbol. You gotta create a panel schedule once you click on it. And then you can see, you know, the reason if we go back to our other schedule, so everything is in A here and not spread across the other phases. And that's all because in E1, everything is on the A phase. So again, it's gonna <clears throat> pull everything up through the model. So if I had, uh, so E2 is the one that's right next to it. So if E2 will create a panel schedule, use default, shows that nothing is connected. Oh, it's because of T3. So T3 is the, the one that's connected to it. Oh, and if we need to um, create a riser, so we'll just create a riser real quick to see how this is all connected. Um, so through this, uh, and again, all this information, the risers pulled immediately from Revit. So <clears throat> we're looking at E1, it's connected to E2, and it's connected to T3, and then T3 is RP3. So if we do that and it's on the third floor, so we'll go up to the third floor, RP3, go ahead and find that. So here's, here's RP3. And again, we'll create a panel schedule here as well. So we can see, all right, all these receptacles are here. So if we move this down to phase B, we can see, you know, it moved, moved down to, to phase B and we could do the same thing here. So we go to RP3, uh, move it down. Now it's on phase C, MSB, it's on phase C here as well. So again, no matter, uh, basically what's in the model, it'll all automatically update. And just know that the first time you create a panel schedule, it's gonna name it accordingly. So that's why there's two RP3s and this should really be RP2. Since I renamed uh, some of these panel schedules later. So as you can see, this name, this branch panel name will update. However, the naming here in your panel schedules won't. So just a quick little thing that is within Revit on updating and all that kind of stuff. Um, this riser diagram that I created, uh, it's a simple little add-in that, that we have. Again, you don't need this, you can have it for whatever, but it'll show your connected, your uh, bus loads, your main circuit breaker, uh, ratings, voltage, AIC, anything that you have within your panels, it will uh, bring in and the same for uh, transformers, anything like that. So just a, a little tool that we created to quickly, easily create riser diagrams 
for your models. But again, going through panel schedules, note that like location, so this says space 59. Uh, if we go look at our riser of E2, so it's an electrical room 220. Again, with some of these panel schedules, so to, to go and really edit your panel schedule, just go to manage, uh, edit a template, and then we'll just look at our branch panel. Um, so location, uh, you can have that in there, or um, you can go through and, and change really any of these locations. Uh, typically, the it'll work, but it's pulling space names. But there's you know all these uh, different factors uh, that you can put in for your panels. Unfortunately, like room name is not uh, not that, but you can do levels. You put a level um, parameter in here to put on your diagrams, um, but basically anything that you want is within uh, any of this. So the enclosure type, so like NEMA uh, 1, 3R, mounting, surface, or flush, um, panel name, anything like that can, can go in there. Keynotes, if you have any other type IDs, anything like that, um, you can put that within your panels. If you just want like text, so you can just remove that parameter you can finish the template. So now we'll change the template. You do need to change it for each one. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. So location, and then I can just put electrical 220. And there again, note that um, Revit doesn't store that text. So if I change the template again, I'll have to recreate that. But again, um, going off the, the riser, electrical 220, I can put that in here for E2 and then the rest of it will populate through. So in mains type, again, since this is text, um, it'll, and well, so this is probably a rating <clears throat> for all those panel types. So that's why it, it gives you that note. So if the mains rating here in 225 amp. Again, uh, you can update any of that. And then as you add loads, it'll add in here to load classification. So most of this, I've just got receptacle circuited just to have something in here. And uh, as you can see, we're not completely balanced across, uh, across everything. Just again, we circuited some of this just to have loads in here. But again, load classification, I'll do that. Your demand factor, everything like that, total connected. Um, again, this would be across the phases, not a peak phase demand is where your total connected is. So it's taking that over three um, to give you the total connected loads. So that's how Revit is doing it. Again, if you actually had balanced it out, it would be 64. So it's a total connected balanced load, not unbalanced uh, max phase. So that's a really quick walkthrough of panel schedules, how they kind of work. And again, you can, for any of these, you know, move them down, uh, move across or move to. So this is a new one in 21, I believe was the first year. I'm in Revit 21. Um, you could renumber indexes, any of that kind of stuff. Um, so they've added some, some nice little features in uh, panel schedules for Revit. I think it's in 20, but definitely in 21, um, or like rebalance loads, right? It can you do little things like that. So again, this is just a quick little walkthrough of um, panel schedules in Revit. Again, so for E1, if we wanted to go and look over here at our, our riser, it's in 220. Um, and if we looked at this, so electrical 220, so that's correct. Um, E2, right, we already wrote it in there. So E1, electrical 220. And then again, for sheets, um, I've got just like a blank sheet here, right? Uh, but we can click, drag, panel schedules onto the sheet and uh, set them quickly and easily to, uh, to create your sheets. So there you are. A little quick walkthrough of uh, risers and panel schedules in Revit.